Hello there. My name is Lance Vickers, and I'm an assistant professor of forest dynamics and management at the University of Kentucky. And I'm here today to talk about white oak across the eastern U.S. with a particular focus of what's going on in the understory of these forests, which I think is where the real story is. Um, before I go any further, I'd like to acknowledge some folks that have helped me in my thinking about white oak in this region. The first being um, Ben Knapp, who is an associate professor of civil culture at the University of Missouri and John Locke, who is a professor of civil culture here at the University of Kentucky. White Oak is an incredibly important resource to it. It spans a huge range, basically all of the Eastern US. Uh, and this map here from the 1920s shows that there's a commercial range within that range. So the darker green band there is where the commercial range is. And here at the University of Kentucky, we're really in the heart of that commercial range. Of it. Um, again, White Oak is so important to us. It's part of the oaks that the author William Bryant Logan said were really the frame of civilization and an excellent book that he written that shows all about how oaks were critical and in many cases white oak was a critical part of advances in human civilization white oak spans 100 million acres and around 70 percent of those acres are mature and with that raises some special challenges that we'll be talking more and more about here in a bit there are around 4.4 billion white oak trees in the east and that puts them ranked around 12th or two percent of all trees in the east there's around 17 billion white oak seedlings in the east which sounds like a lot but we'll learn here in a little bit that maybe that's not enough and there's 130 million mbf of white oak salt timber out there now what's an mbf that's a thousand board feet so i just said there's 130 million thousand board feet 130 million thousand that sounds like a number that my daughters would use when describing how many loads of laundry they have to fold in a given week but it's a real number so we're going to use it here that 130 million mbf of salt timber ranks third behind only loblolly pine and tulip tree for most standing volume of any species in the east so white oak's incredibly important to us and with that importance comes recognition that we want to try to conserve that resource and there's growing concerns that the long-term sustainability of that resource is not assured and that really comes from realizations from folks like john Locke and jeff stringer here at the university of kentucky looking at this age distribution there and seeing that most of the white oak we have are in mature stands stands that are 70 80 100 plus years but if we look in the younger stands first of all we don't have as many younger forests on the land landscape and those younger forests that we do have don't have as much white oak in them as we would like to see so while there's plenty of white oak on the landscape now the concern really is for in the future as those younger forests that don't have as much white oak in them become tomorrow's mature forests we may be having a shortfall of what we're used to in terms of white oak and that recognition has probably led to you seeing things come across your news feed about how um, things like bourbon barrels that we really depend on white oak to produce could be a concern and that's really the whole concern for white oak is driven out of this recognition that we don't have enough young white oak on the landscape but we have a lot of mature white oak on the landscape right now in fact we have a growing amount of white oak on the landscape in terms of mature stands for the past 20 years or so across the range of white oak the standing timber volume has increased by nearly 30 percent and that timber growth has consistently outpaced whatever we might remove from harvesting or trees that die so in terms of volume out there right now we really have no indications of any over harvesting or any shortages in the short term we've got lots of big trees and those big trees are growing but along with that increased growth big trees getting bigger we've had some accompanying trends that have built one of those is that any volume we might, we might gain from younger white oak trees moving into the canopy tends to be offset by trees dying so whatever we might gain from new trees is automatically being offset by other trees dying we're not building that resource from new trees entering the system. So the combination of those things, having trees growing but less recruitment, suggests and shows in the data here that if we look at the population growth, not timber growth, but the number of trees on the landscape, those trends are trending negative now. In other words, for every large white oak tree that dies, we have less than one small white oak growing into the canopy to take its place. And that's what this graph here shows. Over the past 15 to 20 years here, we take a look at the number of trees we've added through recruitment. That's that green bar, and that's trees that are growing into this five inch size class, which we typically consider as on their way to making it into the overstory. And this is on the percentage scale. So how many trees have we added in terms of percent of how many we had to start with? So if we had 100 trees and we're adding 1.4%, we're adding a little over one tree per acre per year in this system. And it's been 1.3, 1.3, 1.4 in terms of recruitment rates 
um, for the past 20 years or so. We compare that to the number of trees that we lose from harvesting and mortality. We see that our harvesting and our mortality rates combined are more than what we're adding. So that's how we can say that for every large white oak tree that dies, we have less than one small one ready to take its place. So if we were to be a little bit cute about it here, we'd say our white oak resource, that's the liquid we're trying to keep in the barrel. In this case, our barrel is leaking. Why might that be? And really, as I alluded to earlier, the understory is the story here. Um, you've probably heard folks, I know you've heard uh, folks like Dr. Jeff Stringer on this very program talking about how we have a regeneration and recruitment crisis going on for white oaks uh, across the East. And oaks generally, and white oaks specifically, has been the focus of a lot of research over the past, oh gosh, 50 years even. Folks noticing that it's really hard to regenerate oaks, and white oaks for sure are part of that. Uh, and there's been several articles that come up showing how we have basically not enough oaks in the understory. And really, I think this paper by Dr. Dan Day captures the situation pretty well. He says that regeneration and recruitment are the pillars of oak sustainability. And he says, really, the situation tends to be that if oak seedlings are present, they're usually too small to compete with all the other species that are in the understory of today's forests. And any mature trees that we might have are too large to reliably sprout. So you can see if we don't have enough seedlings present, we sort of violate what... Um, Dave Loftus said were the two laws of oak silicone. You need to have abundant seedlings in place, and when you have those in place, you need to give them sufficient and timely release. That was all about white oak sort of at the big scale. We're going to zoom in a little bit and take a look at three case studies here. We're going to look at three prominent white oak regions in terms of where white oak tends to be a lot of the composition here. And we're going to take sort of an east to west transect. We're going to move from the Piedmont to the northern Cumberland Plateau and then wind up at the western end of the range in the Ozark Highlands. So if we look at the Piedmont, this really is an important region for white oak. It's 12.3 million acres and white oak's present on 67% of them, believe it or not. In mature stands that have white oak present on them in this region, white oak tends to comprise around 12% of the canopy there. And to have around 300 seedlings present per acre in the understory. So white oak uh, seedlings, that is, 300 white oak seedlings per acre, which is about 10%. So that composition matches the overstory pretty well there. But around 44% of the understory uh, acres have no white oaks present in the understory. So that's a bit concerning. Then if we look at saplings, so looking at seedlings that have grown from the seedling size to reach a diameter of around one to three inches, we see there's only 15 of those per acre. So we have 300 seedlings present on a given acre there, but only 15 saplings present. And those saplings the white oaks only make up 3% of all the saplings present. So that seedling to sapling ratio suggests that we may be having some recruitment bottlenecks. We may be having a hard time getting seedlings to move into the sapling size class and then move into the larger size classes in this region. If we look at the overstory, we have no signs of shortages in terms of uh, standing timber. It's actually increasing, just like the region-wide average suggested. We've gained 27% of volume since 2005 in the overstory there. But if we look at the demographics there on the trees per acre basis, like we talked about earlier with those green, blue, and red bars, we see that our blue and red bars there are basically matching our green bars. So for every tree that we're adding, we're losing around the same number of trees on a given acre on a given year in this region. We move a little further west to the northern Cumberland Plateau. There's around 6 million total forested acres there, and white oaks present on 73% of those acres. In this region, where we have mature stands with white oak present, white oak tends to make up around 16% of the canopy there, but our seedling population only makes up about 4%. So white oaks in the understory are only around 4% of all understory stems, but in the canopy at 16%. And in fact, on around half of the acres, there's no white oak seedlings present at all. Saplings are even a little more depressing there. Uh, there's only five white oak saplings on average per acre, and those make up around 1% of all the saplings there. On a whopping 91% of the acres in this region, there are no white oak saplings in mature stands. So that low seedling abundance there, we only have 100 seedlings per acre and they make up only 4% of all seedlings. That low seedling abundance for white oak suggests that we may have an establishment bottleneck in place in this region. Um, we may also have a recruitment bottleneck in place. Also, we may have trouble getting enough seedlings on the ground to start with and getting those seedlings to move into larger size classes, which is troubling. If we look at the overstory there, again, just like everywhere else in the region, we're growing. Uh, the white oak trees that we do have are big and they're getting bigger to the tune of 26% growth since 2005. But if we look at our number of trees and those demographics looking at births and death rates there, we see that we're losing around a half a percent of our trees per acre population every year because our recruitment, those new trees moving into the system, are not offsetting the losses that we have 
due to mortality and harvesting. And really, we've seen an uptick in the proportion of trees that are lost from mortality in this region. Moving further west to the Ozark Highlands, uh, where there's 15.7 million total forested acres and white oaks present on 75% of them. This region is really um, white oak centric. Um, in mature stands there, white oak comprises 30% of the canopy. There in the understory, we'll find around 300 seedlings per acre there on average, but that makes up only around 10% of all seedlings present. So 30% in the canopy and the understory around 10%. Saplings, we're down to around 18 per acre, which is around 6%. White oaks around 6% of all saplings there. On 81% of the acres, there's no white oaks present as saplings in the understory in mature stands. So again, that seedling to sapling ratio where we have 300 seedlings, but only 18 saplings, suggest that even in the Ozarks where white oak recruitment and regeneration challenges are viewed as less challenging than in other parts of the range, um, we still may be having some recruitment bottlenecks in place there. Uh, overstory, again, the same story. It's growing there. Uh, it's increased 26% in standing volume since 2005, but the total trees per acre demographics there are static, but maybe trending negative as we see we're starting to have increases in the proportion of our trees that we lost that we lose due to mortality or harvesting, the proportion of this, that that is mortality seems to be increasing and our recruitment levels are staying pretty flat. So again, another one of those situations where we only have just as many or slightly less trees added as we do trees lost due to whatever reason harvesting or just trees dying. So to summarize, across the range and in each of the specific regions that we looked at, our volume growth, standing volume, continues to increase and outpace utilization. We've got lots of big trees out there that are getting bigger, and that growth is more than what we're removing each year. However, if we look at the total population demographics in terms of number of trees, and this includes births and deaths, we see that we're starting to have declines in abundance, so we have fewer trees on the landscape. Saplings are absent on about three-quarters of all mature white oak acres in all of those regions, which really means that no ecological sector is immune to regeneration or recruitment concerns. And there are barriers to white oak regeneration and recruitment, but those don't seem to be the same in each region. So again, just to reiterate, I think the understory is the story in these forests. It's really all about the lack of regeneration and the lack of getting those seedlings to move into larger size classes. That's really what's driving this concern here. And I think, again, Day captured it pretty well in his article from 2014, where he says the decrease in oak regeneration potential must be reversed through active management. We need to do things to improve this. Um, but he also sort of gives us a call to arms here. He says we need to do this now while there's still an adequate source of acorns for natural regeneration. I think those are words that we do well to heed. So what are things that you might do uh, to tackle this situation? Well, the first I would say, whether you're a landowner or not, is to get educated, find more uh, info about this. And there's lots of good resources out there. Uh, the Extension page here at the University of Kentucky, talk to Extension foresters, talk to your Extension agents, knowledgeable people that can help you out. Uh, check out the White Oak Initiative page. There's a lot of uh, collection of a lot of good information there from folks that are really concerned and really focused on White Oak there. And finally, if you want to take a deeper dive, I would recommend this textbook at this web address here. It's called The Ecology and Silviculture of Oaks. It's written by my friends and colleagues from the Forest Service. And they really do a deep dive and, and really collect everything there is to know that we do know right now about um, growing and maintaining oak forests when white oaks are an important part of that. If you're a landowner, I would encourage you, maybe the best thing you can do is get engaged with a forester. Find one, talk to them, show them your land, tell them what you're concerned about. I train foresters here at the University of Kentucky, and I will tell you that they uh, learn a lot about white oak as they're going through their studies. And so I would encourage you to engage a forester and talk to them about your concerns and needs, and they'll help you try to meet your objectives, whatever they might be. So with that, I would like to say thank you for letting me spend some of the day with you. Um, if you have any questions about this topic, reach out to me. My email address is lance.vickers at uky.edu. And once again, thank you for your time, and I hope you have a great day.